Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Another entry here based on your suggestions. I'll probably do one more after this one and then another Cryptids of the Week and then give it a rest for a little bit and then start working on the Urban Legends videos. So be on the lookout for those soon. Uh, this one is again based on your suggestions and I love this one because it kind of ties to some of the stuff I've talked to in the past. Uh, some of my more popular ones like the Hoskinbill Goblin and then also the Enfield Horror. This particular cryptid very closely resembles them. So could it be something involving like a cousin of sorts or could it be something as far as a whole new cryptid or monster itself? Who knows? It's up to you to decide. There's only been one known instance of this particular cryptid and even then, and that's why I put the question mark on the title itself, there is one leading factor that could completely discredit everything tied to this cryptid being real and you'll hear about that here in a few minutes by the way um, quick little side note I was looking at some of my older videos like the hospital goblin one again and I realized all of a sudden that um, those videos it seems like my voice was a lot lower uh, during the playback the main reason for it if you check out some of my older videos the way they sound different is because I used to use a software program online I think it was called J cut if I remember correctly and it would process my videos for me and it would edit them but at the end of the day whenever the thing was finished it would slow it down somewhat I don't know why but that's the way it was and when I realized that that was doing it all this time then that's when I switched it instead to uh, what I do now which is the Windows Media Player or the Windows Media Editor so that's why the videos now are far different in terms of the sound they sound real instead of the slower playback version for some of my older videos in case you ever wondered about that but this particular cryptid again ties into some of my older videos and it has to do with one called the ghostly scarecrow which you'll see a picture of here um, this is a cryptid that has only had one instance one single incident in terms of an encounter and then that's it and it has to do with a pretty recent time period we're talking about 2005 so it's not too far back and it has to do with a location there in Thailand so you have to go back to August 31st 2005 there in Thailand there's a area called the Chiang Rai area and specifically a farming village called Huai Nam Rock which you'll see a picture of here uh, this gives you an idea essentially of what that kind of village is there a very remote very um, I guess you could call it backwards oriented. In other words, it's not a large urban sprawling city with huge um, technological advances. No, they're pretty much just farms and villages and huts of some sorts. A lot of farming, obviously, but very few technological uh, stuff that you would expect from a city. And I mention all this because this incident, whatever it occurred, um, it clearly had the makings of a very remote location. So there's a bundle of people that only live there and they don't have the technology to like capture anything as far as uh, photos or anything involving video of these of this particular incidents. So that's why um, you'll be seeing very few pictures of this particular cryptid if any pictures at all they're mainly just drawings because to that to this point there hasn't been any concrete evidence of an actual photograph of this cryptid so here's what occurred August 31st 2005 there on the farming village of Hawaii Nam Rock there was a guy a 51 year old by the name of uh, this is a good one it's Sai Wong Boon Rach Asak, I think that's how his name is stated um, he said that somewhere around 8 to 8 30 in the morning he was bicycling past that farming village when he noticed something bizarre um, towards the middle of the field and he previous uh, previously stated and he was adamant about it that he was not drunk when he was um, seeing this so he wanted to state that so that way any kind of question about his sobriety was pretty much thrown out the door in this case what he saw was he saw something that resembled a strange creature um, he called it yeah, he thought it was actually a scarecrow at first uh, because it, it looked like it was something that you would normally expect in the middle of a field, a scarecrow. But whenever this thing started acting in an animated and intelligent manner, that's when he realized that this was something else all entirely. He said it chilled him to the bone when he saw when his eyes were truly adjusting and seeing what this thing was. Basically, he described it as a hovering scarecrow of some sort. 
and this thing, whatever it was, kept nodding its head, kept out, kept dancing almost in a lively manner. And then the part that chilled him was that this thing, whatever it was, turned its head directly to him, and it had what he stated was blood red eyes, and it almost gave him like an uh, what he called was like a gaze of some sort, asking for help. The way he described this thing was as follows: it was an armless humanoid creature, um, probably about the size of. 30 inches in height, so just under about 3 feet or so. And it had two small legs, but most importantly, no arms of any sort. Um, it was humanoid, i.e. like it had a leg, it had, um, I'm sorry, it had legs, it had a middle body, and then of course it had a head, so it wasn't more animalistic, but more humanoid. And then, most distinctly, it had two very large ears um, towards the side of it, and then of course the aforementioned blood red eyes. So he saw all of this while he was bicycling past the field itself, and whenever this creature again turned its head and looked with those eyes directly at him as if it was asking for help, instead of him staying, he wisely just ran off as quickly as he could on his bike, and that way he could try to inform others of what he saw. He said that the most disturbing thing, though, was the fact that whatever this creature was, it was not attached to the ground. It was, in fact, floating. It was floating around. Um, he said that the way he informed other people was that gravity apparently had no effect on this creature. You see how it kind of mirrors what the Hopskinville goblin was from before? The way, uh, one of my earlier videos where those goblins, whatever they were, were also quote-unquote floating in the air. And then in some cases like the Enfield Horror, one of my other earlier videos where you had this uh, thing, it was walking on the ground, but it would move very quack, very quickly and then jump uh, a good distance, at least 30 feet plus or so. So in some ways, gravity was not really impacting at all. So he went around and tried to find some other villagers to let them know about what he saw. He told them about it. They, in turn, went to, to the village itself, uh, from the village to the farm to try to see what it was, and they saw it too. There was another person, another witness, that stated this unbelievable, what they called an unbelievable apparition to reporters later on. They stated, the alien is about 70 centimeters high, it has yellow skin and a flat chest, its mouth is very tiny, it has a bald, big head with big eyes and big ears. So again very reminiscent of what this other guy, the first guy that saw this thing, uh, they, both of them uh, pretty much corroborated the same deal as well. But there was yet another person, uh, someone by the name of Bao Pan Lawichai. She stated that she was actually the first one to see this thing in the morning. Instead of that other guy seeing it about 8.30 in the morning, she saw it at 6.30 in the morning, and she too stated that it was the same thing. There was something that was floating. Uh, gravity had no effect on it. And it was there in that field, uh, around uh, you know, floating around doing things in an animated way. And so eventually, other villagers swarmed the area. They too would also see this thing. Uh, but by this point, whatever it was, um, it would wander around for nearly about an hour. And then it was at one point that it started to stretch. What other people described it as stretching. It turned jet black, and it disappeared straight into the sky. Uh, like as, like if it was a rocket just soaring straight up into the sky. Um, others, though, that were there whenever this happened also stated that they described what was a bright glowing orb of some sort before this thing disappeared, but those were a few. Others did not mention that either. So by this point, the village, um, the news about whatever these villagers were seeing was stretching around other areas, so much so that there was a flock of people from other cities, from other villages that came in. There were hundreds of people, in fact, that were coming in towards this area, and it was crazy, and it was pandemonium because here again you had a village which probably had less than 100 people, and then all of a sudden there was a multitude of them, a couple hundred, that were coming from other places just to try to see what this thing was. Um, uh, the pandemonium ensued to the point that more cops were brought in. Uh, there was a district office there, a mayor as well, that were trying to deal with the crowds. Um, there was uh, the mayor himself that was stating there's no proof of whatever was occurring. There was no UFO. People were speculating that there was involving some kind of UFO crash and that whatever this thing was was a remnant of the crash, maybe some long-lost alien trying to get home. He was trying to state that there was nothing in terms of any proof of this to try to dispel the crowd because he was saying, look, there's no damage to the rice field uh, that, that this alien was apparently found at. But others would say, of course, there's no damage because um, this alien was floating above the field. Um, if but for the fact 
that if, if it was floating, obviously there would be nothing in terms of any damage. And then the roads around that village, there was so much traffic that um, those roads that were built out of mud, I'm sorry, out of dirt, were suddenly turning into mud from all this damage, whatever was happening. Um, people were just creating all this crazy chaos. And so that was it. Um, the, the, the alien either never returned or did return, but nobody ever saw it because there was no other instance of anything involving other witnesses now where the uh, of, of, of this aliens uh, revisit now as far as the question mark that I had um, on my title about this ghostly scarecrow and whether it's really real or not comes from the fact that cut to a couple days later and then on August 29th there was I'm sorry um, yes cut to a couple days later there um, uh, there was a gentleman that suddenly stated I think I know what this is and he stated and this was a guy by the name of Pochailoet. Um, his first name is Tong Muan and then last name Pochailoet. He was also a resident there of that village. He stated that this thing, whatever it was, was actually one of his own creations. Um, he apparently made his own scarecrow and he tethered it, uh, filled it up with helium, tethered it to somewhere around that field because he wanted to use it to try to scare away all these chickens and all these ducks that were constantly eating the, uh, the fruits that were there, the vegetables that were there in that garden. But he stated that um, the reason why he didn't speak up before was because of all the pandemonium that ensued with all these people coming in and expecting to see something and then not seeing something. And then that in turn just escalates the tensions. Um, here they were. Uh, at this point, he knew what it was, but he didn't say anything because if he did so, then the chaos that was happening, these people might uh, either A, not believe him or B, attack him of some sort by thinking you're causing all this on purpose and we're really mad about it. And so um, he didn't want anything as far as any damage occurring to him. He stated that he did all this a couple days earlier on August 29th before that, but there was a... Uh, storm of some sort that took his scarecrow away and he thought he lost it but cut, cut to you know two days later on August 31st and then people are starting to see this scarecrow in and around that area so that's basically if you're if you believe his story what happened he built a scarecrow he fashioned it in his own way he said there it was also the same height as whatever this thing was uh, he described it as also being um, three feet tall large head a nose eyes mouth but he stated it had tiny arms and legs um, so in this case whatever the other people saw they didn't see any arms but he stated he created arms maybe they blew away in the storm so cut you know until a little bit later the storm happened he lost his scarecrow and it ended up in someone else's field and that's where the panic ensued so if you believe that story then that's what happened um, it wasn't a cryptid it was something just like a homemade old-fashioned scarecrow that just happened to be lost and then found by all these people but people are quick to dismiss that claim that it was a homemade fashioned scarecrow because they to this day state that this was whatever this thing was it was intelligent it was not something that was just floating randomly um, by the wind no this was something that was doing actions it was turning it was looking at people it was stopping it was um, it was doing things in a manner that you had 100 percent clear indication that this was an intelligent being it was not something again that was just tethered to the ground or tethered to something and just aimlessly floating around there are two clear differences between the two is I wish I could describe it better but that's how the people kept stating it so to them to this day they believe that no this was a real deal this was something as far as a UFO or something involving some kind of creature of some sort and they saw it and it was not a scarecrow so what it was I mean was it really an old-fashioned scarecrow or was it the real deal as far as some kind of cryptid or monster it's up to you to decide I'm of the opinion that after I read all of this story and then the and then all the, the information ended with this guy coming out and claiming you know what it really was my own scarecrow that I'm that I made it was just lost in the storm I think that it was that real that thing it was a scarecrow rather than a, any kind of cryptid but what do you guys think or am I wrong um, do you think it might be something else altogether if anyone has any other instances that they can think of uh, related to this ghostly scarecrow 
you know, please, it'll be fascinating to see um, if, um, especially if there is anything else, any other uh, photographs or any other video. And again, the reason why I tie all this to just being whatever this thing was as far as that guy Scarecrow is because with no other incidences involving this cryptid, um, it makes it much more believable that yes, indeed, it was this guy Scarecrow. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.